Oaks, many congratulations, off and running. Relief to be stood there, or sat there, sorry? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, I made it myself too difficult in this game. Uh, yeah, I should have played better and then I wouldn't uh, get into trouble. I got in too, really. Uh, so yeah, but at the end I'm relieved to be through and I think the last set I showed some battling quality and also the 104 was like a key finish for me, which gave me a big relief and uh, yeah, still room for improvement I would say. Yeah? When you went 2-1 up, we saw you give it the big one over to the family, what were you messaging to them? Well, my message was, uh, yeah, I'm here to fight, huh? I'm still not playing what I can do, and uh, but there's something inside me, I, I want to yeah, un unleash my beast, you know, and uh, I can play so much better, I know that, but I need to show that. I can talk about it hundred times, but I need to show it, and uh, the day will come, and uh, I will have a really, really great game up on the stage. Was the pressure there, having seen so many seeds already depart, and you not wanting to join that list? I'll be honest with you as well, uh, I felt quite nervous today, I didn't know why, but uh, I take it as it comes. And uh, yeah, I expected really Gabriel uh, for, for a really nice clash tonight. And uh, Benito was a kind of opponent where you have like a must win. And uh, yeah, I didn't play the favorite role today. I didn't act like a favorite. I should have raised my game in some parts, really. Yeah. Just touching on what you said there, is that kind of hard if you've prepared to play Gabriel mentally and then it obviously doesn't materialize? Yeah, well, I, I prepare with my best ability for my own. Uh, my own game needs to be right, my own performance needs to be right. Uh, then it doesn't matter which opponent you have, really. Um, but it was just a guessing, was just a feeling that it's going to be like a tough clash on Friday night. And uh, yeah, the end was different. And I, I knew uh, Benito has a hard time behind him, but I know also his battling quality. I've seen it against Gabriel. He always comes back somehow. You could see in this game the 158, uh, some doubles. He always finds a moment where he comes back in the game, so it gets really tight. And uh, yeah, that made me kind of nervous. Big result for your ranking as well, because you're not defending anything. From no. from two years ago. So have you got one you eye? Know that. <laughs> have you got one eye on the, the top twenty now because of that? Well, yes, I have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that good to watch rankings or, or not? Or do you get bogged down by it sometimes? Well, it's nice to watch it. Uh, yeah, one of my targets is to be the best youngster in the ranking, and uh, the guys like Chris Doby and Jeffrey Deswan making it really difficult winning their game. So, of course, I want to be in the top 20. Uh, of course, I hope to be one time in the in the top 16 to maybe play the Masters. It would be an unbelievable experience for me to be uh, to be honest with you. But this is miles away still. Um, I should have played better in the Grand Prix maybe, or I should have qualified for the Grand Slam, then I would be in a different position right now, maybe in position 19, 18, but yeah, I didn't play the, yeah, a really good year, 2018 was brilliant, but then 2019 was kind of an average year, so uh, 220, I need to be there with a bang. Speaking of being the best youngster, did you watch your countryman Nico oh. play earlier, and what a performance that was. What a guy, do, do you know Kinder, Sh Kinder Chocolate? <laughs> I've always said he's the perfect face for Kinder Chocolate <laughs> marketing wise. You know that, I, I know him since I'm uh, 14. He actually, uh, the city I'm born, Wiesbaden, he just lives 40 kilometers away. So we've played in the youth, but uh, I decided with 16 to take the risk and be a professional darts player. And Nico said, well, calm man, I'm, I'm uh, really cool and down to earth. I first work and then I come back and beat you guys all. And he has a, he has a great mindset, he's a funny guy. And uh, yeah, I loved having him in the practice room today. And I loved seeing him be beating Joe Cullen. And uh, it's great to have a practice partner tomorrow. We have two Germans in round three, huh? What about that, big news? Big news, and again, another German rivalry for you to embrace. Is that good? Oh, well, well, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> we, we had that before the Worlds, didn't we? Uh, well, uh, I don't want to look uh, to rival, really. That will come anyway. Uh, whole Germany is improving. doesn't matter if it's me, Gabriel, Nico, Martin, Robert. There are so many guys who can play proper darts now, who can beat some of the top guys in the game. And I think it's great for the sport because um, we have a lot of tournaments held in Germany, and it's just fair that we get a lot of players on a, on a next level and on a good game uh, to be competitive. And maybe we have four or five guys in the World Championships throughout the next year, so that would be great for the sport in Germany. Nice. Maybe a women, huh? Yeah. What about that? Fallon, I'm pretty sure there are hundreds, or, sorry, hundreds, thousands or ten thousands of women sitting on the TV. So Fallon said, well, I'm pretty sure I can do that. I, wa I want to play her one time, so that will, that also will give a boost for German darts, women-wise. Max, absolute pleasure, mate. Thank you very much. No problem, mate.
Um, Max, seeing Nico win earlier on tonight, do you think it really shows how much the German Super League and the European Tour events in Germany have really, have, have really brought, brought darts on over there? Definitely, definitely. It, it took some time, uh, really. Um, I mean, we, a lot of players in Germany are still new to the system. And, uh, but it's great to see also on the development tour there are more and more young guys who are trying that and uh, don't forget they have a small amount of money, you know, they, they work or they study and they invest their last penny really to fly into Manchester and play tournaments in Wigan and Barnsley but that's great to see, they're taking the risk, now it's about the mentality of the guys, are they able to take the risk and to invest in themselves, to show themselves they can play proper darts at a, at a high level and uh, I'm pretty sure over the next years we're going to see more and more Germans coming through and uh, especially the youngest, they make it hard for me. So uh, that will push me probably to the next level as well. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, I like competition. Hearing your name being chanted as well by the fans tonight out there, what did you make of the atmosphere finally? Yeah, the atmosphere is always great at Ali Pelli. It's uh, in Germany we would call it Hexenkessel, uh, which means uh, uh, the noise really reaches the stage and uh, that's what you always get at, at Ali Pali and uh, you had Germans here tonight, you see German flags, they were singing my song, uh, but they were also singing a song for Nico and having uh, writing his name down uh, on the 180 uh, papers, uh, it's nice to see, it's nice to see and I hope, uh, yeah. For the next games, uh, Nico plays Monday, if I'm right, I play Sunday. Hope to see uh, some more Germans here at Ali Pali, yeah. Do you think that gives you an extra boost, especially in a game, a game like that against Benito, where it was so close? Definitely, uh, de definitely. Uh, we are here in London and, uh, yeah, maybe a quarter of tickets sold to Germany. That's, that's great to have, that's great to see. And uh, also Dutch guys, we have plenty of them here, which supported Benito tonight. And, yeah, it's a global sport and it's great to see so many uh, people coming to the Palace year in, year out. Thank you very much, Max. Cheers. No problem. Josh.